I'm just waiting on the notification. Okay. Excellent. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a magnificent guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than our brother Adio Nasur out of Baltimore. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, brother Joshua. Yes, sir. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewer and audience, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come have a conversation with us. The first mm -hmm. question that we would like to know, sir, is when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Oh, it's such a great question and an amazing question. I was incarcerated. And when I was incarcerated, I was doing some soul searching. I knew I needed to change in my life. So I literally started going from the Bible, studying the Bible from cover to cover a couple times. Then from the Bible, I started reading history books. I always had a love for Martin Luther King Jr. and heard that he took courses in comparative religions, meaning studying other religions, the various world religions. So I started doing the same thing. Then I started going to services, the church service, the Catholic service, and me being open-minded, I wanted to know from every source I could possibly learn from. And from the church to the Moore Science Temple of America, and this is in prison now, but they had all of these religious organizations to the Sunni community, fasted with them during the month of Ramadan. And while fasting during the month of Ramadan, I saw another group of brothers over there in the area where we met. And uh, they had on white shirts and bow ties. And I'm like asking the brothers in the Sunni community, who are they? And they say, oh, they're the guys that preach that racism stuff, you know? I mm. said, okay. In my mind, I want to know about them too. I'm going to learn about them. So I later pulled up one of the brothers and they told me about it. And I went to one of the meetings and the brother told me, you know, to listen to Minister Farrakhan. And I listened to this tape that the minister did in Baltimore called The Jesus in Your Midst at Morgan State University in 1986. And I listened to that tape and then another tape called The Responsibilities of Leadership. And when I listened to them tapes, I said, man, this is me right here. This is me all the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And I joined those brothers right there in the prison. And we wind up having a strong following, you know, a lot of brothers from population was coming out supporting us. We, you know, had hundreds of brothers supporting us. And um, next thing you know, I was eventually promoted to the study group coordinator. But in my mind, I'm the minister, you know, I'm patting myself after him. So I'm the minister in the prison system. And I started, you know, taking the study guides eventually and giving them to the brothers, we studying, we teaching on them. And uh, I'm sending monthly reports to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Like, look, mm. you know, we on it, you know? And to my surprise, the minister responded back. Not mm. once, but I got three separate letters from him. And you know, that just motivated me all the more to just keep driving, keep thriving. And I did. And uh, when I came home, eventually, you know, I went straight to the mosque. And I joined the ranks of the mighty FOI, and here I am, still soldiering. And that was in 1988 when I first heard the minister and joined the nation in the prison system. And uh, by the grace of Almighty God Allah, I, um, you know, was able to touch a lot of brothers and a lot of the brothers that was soldiering with me in the prison. They came home. And they joined and are registered FOI and are still registered to this day. Some, like the seeds, fell by the wayside, but there's a lot that came in and they joined and they are definitely uh, on board with us. But Joshua, I just want to thank you, you know, for what you're doing, because this is so important. So many brothers and sisters may not read, may not be as studious and diligent in their reading. I love reading, but others don't may not you know i'm a certified tutor so i know the illiteracy rate is great mm. but they can hear they can listen and when i was incarcerated it was this older brother named Akbar, like 67 years old and he was illiterate 
but he mm. could listen to a tape of the minister and be able to spit that lecture out that the minister gave almost verbatimly. So he didn't have the art of reading and writing, but he had the art of listening. And I'm just saying, if those who can't read and write that are listening to this podcast, can't read and write well, uh, don't study, have, don't have good study habits, listen. Turn on the podcast. Joshua, I learned of this podcast maybe just three to four months ago. And I'm like, what? I've been missing this. But believe me, I'm caught up. I have a notebook and I take notes from almost every one, one of your guests. And uh, I, I'm going to pretty much be finished. I'm just going to try to catch up to par with you. So where the, the next one that you interview, you know, I can just start, you know, taking notes from that one. But all the other ones, and I said, I want to hear all this because all of us have our experiences, which is knowledge, you know, wisdom, understanding. And I just thankful for you and this podcast, brother. And uh, Allah is our boss. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. And thank you for your honesty, your transparency. And thank you for yes, uh, watching the podcast. I look forward to hearing your notes uh, off air. I would like to hear them. My sister yes, Miriam says, all praise be to Allah. My sister Miriam says, as like family, like salam. And thank you all who are watching and continue to watch the show love all across the country. Thank you to our YouTube family, Brother Musa, Sister Auntie, Brother Kente. Thank you, everyone who's watching people's podcast. Um, my next question, sir, is once you uh, were got out of prison, how did how did the brother the believers treat you at the mosque, and who were the who were the people who trained you? Uh, one of your guests, Brother Larry, Captain Larry Muhammad, he was the captain uh, at the time when I came in, and Brother David, who's named now the captain in San Diego, mm, he was the mm. first officer. So I came in, but unfortunately, I didn't stay there long because I needed employment. So I was hired by NOI Security. Mm -hmm. And in the state of Maryland, you know, Captain Akil, he pretty much had all the contracts for the state of Maryland. But your father pretty much, like he had Captain uh, Sharif, now Minister, Student Minister Sharif, uh, he had everything else sold up. but all of DC and the outskirts, the surrounding counties, your father had that. But I wound up going to work for NOI security. And mm -hmm. this was right immediately after prison. So I didn't soldier, but maybe two or three months in Baltimore Mosque number six. And Minister Jamil, your uncle was the minister at the time. As a fact, I, in, I recited in front of him successfully. Mm -hmm. And um, once I, was hired by NOI security because of the politics in Baltimore, they wanted me to go to DC because the police was coming down on our sites, wanted to see security clearance. And because of, you know, having uh, coming out of the uh, prison system, you know, they didn't want the police I'm talking about, didn't want us on the sites unless we had security clearance. So DC was more lax and we could go to D.C. with a record with no problem. So I went to D.C., and thank God I did. Everything is in divine order. So I went to D.C. and uh, was working uh, under your father's leadership. And soon as everything just happened so quick, because I come home from prison, I joined the ranks of the FOI, become registered at number six. Two or three months, I got to go to D.C. Now, I'm commuting back and forth from Baltimore to D.C., so as I'm commuting, going back and forth, then I wind up in the um, NOI security there, and your father was promoted to Supreme Captain. So, mm -hmm. and Dr. Aline was promoted as the Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, I never got the chance to be under their leadership right there at Mars number four, because they both had just left. But nonetheless, uh, Minister Sean was there and Captain uh, Timothy was there. and. I work, I'm working in NOI security at the time, and because of my work ethics, I wind up being uh, promoted to deputy chief from security guard to deputy chief first site coordinator, then deputy chief of operations. So mm -hmm. I was deputy chief of operations, and Captain Tim was the chief of operations, Brother Dion was the vice president, and your father, quite naturally, was the owner and operator and president. So... 
their brothers right. received me very well to be able to get me on that path that quick. So all this transpired within about maybe six months from me coming home. Beautiful. Praise be to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teacher? They know me pretty much that, you know, anything that I do, you know, it's not going to be too crazy, too far off. And they probably just had in their mind, I'm going to see how this worked for him because they know I was in the streets at one time and running wild. And now that they know that I'm being a part of something that is righteous, they pretty much like had the wait and see game. We're going to wait and see how this turn out. And then mm -hmm. uh, in time, next thing you know, I got family members coming to the mosque with me. And mm -hmm. they come from a Christian background, just like I did. I, we grew up, you know, in the church. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Okay. Yes, sir. And during this time, did the uh, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan come to D.C. and or through Baltimore? And were you able to um, protect him and help, you know, offer security for him? Yes, sir. Absolutely. He came to Baltimore. I believe it was uh, 94 when he came to Baltimore in 1994. He came to Baltimore, Mars number six under Brother Minister uh, Jamil's local leadership. And uh, in D.C., he came to D.C. And um, I was able to be there for security for both events mm -hmm. not only there but i traveled uh with the minister being of being promoted uh from foi to uh squad leader to lieutenant and then first officer under captain larry you know i was right there with captain larry and captain larry if you know him i know you know of him from yes, interviewing him but he's a no-nonsense captain He's a beautiful brother, strong captain. He was in the white man's military and took that white man military, you know, knowledge and experience that he had and brought it to the FOI. And very yeah. stern brother, very stern. But, you know, we you can imagine Captain First Officer being close. And we uh, traveled together, man. We spent so much time together. And, um, you know, we protected the minister every time he came in the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, be it Virginia, D.C., Baltimore, North Carolina, South Carolina, everywhere the minister go, we try to be there. And not <clears> just in the Atlantic, uh, wherever, you know, he is and we can be there, we're going to be there. And I thank Allah for him, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Uh, and thank you again for your transparency and stories. We have some more questions for you, sir. And thank you sir. everyone who's watching all across the world. I want, you mm -hmm. sent me a very interesting picture, an historical picture that we're going to use as one of your YouTube thumbnails, inshallah, of yes, you um, in front of the mosque. Where, I don't know where you are in front of, but the police, dealing with the police. Can you let us know uh, what was the circumstance? Yes, sir. When uh, we were, you're familiar, and I'm sure most of the guests are familiar with the dope busters. You know, dope busters, uh, you know, wind up expanding you know not only in the dc baltimore area but throughout the nation you know cleverly you know because of certain reasons mainly the government we had to go under uh different names for security but you still got the foi so we did whatever we could to go uh and protect the communities and this one particular community called potomac gardens we went there and we protected our community you know that we contracted to protect and we come in with that moral force, nothing but love, you know, but you always got, you know, a bad apple in a bunch. And he had this one brother didn't like us. He wanted to sell his drugs. We telling him, brother, there's no problem if you want to sell the drugs for your personal life and all. But we put we are hired to protect this community. So out of love, we asking you to take that somewhere else right here. We want to be able to have the children come out to play, have the adults, have the elderly come out and not fear, you know, gunfire, gunshots and uh, weed smoking and things of this nature. So, you know, most of the brothers had respect for us, but almost every site that we had, and we had many of them, there was always a bad apple, you know, in a bunch, whereas though we had to get physical, you know, because of defending ourselves as we are taught, you know, therefore why we don't parade our power, you know, but if ignited in the wrong way, then we're going to show our power, you know, yes, sir. we have to exemplify a divine 
ass whipping on, you know, whomever it may be. So this one brother, you know, didn't want to, you know, hear and obey and just walk off and respect us and respect the community. And he wound up walking away, but he turned around and threw a bottle at one of our brothers and the bottle hit the brother, you know, and, and cut his ear, you know. And when that happened, uh, you know, we uh, walked up to the brother to talk to him and then some of his homeboys started coming around. And when they start coming around in an aggressive manner, we're not going to wait for them to attack us. We just got busy because he already done assaulted our brother. So yes, we sir. just got busy, man. And uh, by law's grace, we came out victorious. And uh, with the picture that you're talking about is when um, the police eventually was called on location and they wanted to, you know, talk to us and wanted to figure out what happened. And, you know, we letting them know that they assaulted one of our brothers and, you know, we didn't do too much talking with the police, you know, but uh, they were just there because I guess the residents called them. But uh, we had a number of issues like that, uh, but we always came out victorious only because of the moral force that we have and being backed by Almighty God Allah. And he protected us, man, because we, you know, was in some dangerous territories, uh, Potomac Gardens, Clifton Terrace, uh, Mayfair, Paradise, uh, different locations, Edgewood. It was multiple locations, both in D.C. and in uh Baltimore, Maryland counties as well. So that's what that historical picture is all about. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you thank for standing you strong and, and, and defending yourself and defending our nation and the community as well. Uh, yeah. May I ask the brother who got his ear cut, what was his name? That brother, um, I cannot remember. I think his name was, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, brother Robert Ninex. Okay, if I'm okay. not mistaken, Brother Robert Ninex. And you interviewed Brother James. Uh, he got caught in an altercation there. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's, that's why I, I wanted to ask yeah, the same brother. Yes, yeah, sir. we were soldiering together, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we were soldiering together at the same time. Same incident, same day that he hmm. was explaining on your show what happened to him. That was the same day. Yes, wow. sir. Yes, sir. Man, and, mm -hmm. and, and please go back uh, to everyone who's watching. You can see the other episodes with Brother James of the People's Podcast. Um, yes, brother Captain Akil, brother Captain Larry. David, Captain Larry, everyone, yes. so we can all have the historical, I mean, this is beautiful that we can uh, yes. have our history documented of what took place out of Mass number yes. six, as well as Mass number four, and the entire right. uh, Mid-Atlantic region. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Speaking of the Mid-Atlantic region, uh, the Million Man March, mm -hmm. how, what was the climate like leading up to the Million Man March, and how did it personally impact you? That was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Uh, again, being the first officer at that time, hosting the Million Man March, brother Larry being the captain, me being the first officer, we just worked tirelessly, you know, to where as though we got no sleep many nights, but we didn't need any. We were taught and we learned that as far as sleep is concerned, you know, three hours for a soldier, four hours for a believer, and eight hours for a fool. So mm. we don't sleep a third of our day away, you know. It was three hours, we up and running. So that's exactly, uh, you know, what happened during the Million Man March. We just got busy. And then you had so many national laborers come in town to do the uh, logistics and the planning and getting everything, you know, set up, you know, as far as permit and things of this nature. And... National laborers was constantly coming in and out, in and out of the uh, District of Columbia, D.C., to the, whereas though we just had to stay on post, you know, mm. not only ourselves as captain and, and, and first officer, but all the FOIs, like all hands on duty, all hands mm. on deck, you know, and we were there and we had so many brothers and sisters, man, working to build up like a year when the minister was on the tour, the men's only tour, promoting the Million Man March. When it actually was getting close for within a month, and we were just getting busy nonstop. A lot of the national laborers came in town uh, maybe a couple of weeks before the march, then definitely a few days before the march. 
And uh, the comment was just so beautiful because we, you know, was so loving towards one another as we know we had to be because when the minister, you know, make a call, we want to answer. He called for a million man march and we wanted to answer and we was right there and the climate was just so beautiful. We were there uh, maybe five o'clock in the morning, Captain Larry and myself, five, six o'clock in the morning, we there and didn't leave till it was over. You know, and there was just such a monumental, beautiful time, you know, uh, being without brothers, man, a sea of black men. And as the minister said, uh, after the Million Man March was over, he said, that's a glimpse of heaven. You know, right, seeing, yeah, seeing, you know, our brothers out there like that with not one incident, no fights, you know, very little. I didn't see anybody smoking, drinking alcoholic beverages, getting high. I didn't see any of that. So that was definitely a monumental uh, event that um, was a great experience for me. And to answer your question, the climate was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Be wonderful. Yes, sir. And people are showing you love so, all across the country. Uh, to you a lot. Sir, for the ideal. And thank you all for watching. We have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. And we'll be right back to our brother to ask a few more questions. Thank you all for every Sweet. like share and um anonymous uh cash app as well as every subscription we greatly appreciate you all thank you very much um, here we go there we go Aiken, Georgia is the city rich in musical history. From the soulful sounds of Otis Redding III to the funkadelic grooves of Batin, this town has produced some true legends. On August 6 at 6 p.m., we gather at the historic Douglas Theater to pay tribute to these greats of Macon. It will be a special night as the all-star band takes the stage. Joining forces, the band will perform songs that were dear to Batin, Jamal Thomas. Otis Redding III and Tony Bone Dorsey. Tonight, they come together to create pure musical magic. The guitar effortlessly weaving melodic solos that touch your soul. The heartbeat of the rhythm section driving the groove with infectious energy. The all-star band carries on the legacy, echoing with the same raw passion that captivated audiences decades ago. Together, these extraordinary musicians pay homage to Macon's music legends honoring the legacies that helped put this city on the musical map. This night at the historic Douglas Theater, we celebrate the spirit of Macon and the indelible mark. These greats have left on the world of music. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime performance. Get your tickets now and join us for an unforgettable Perfect. night of music. Perfect. One moment. Also, a book of poetry and spoken word exclusively for you, Black Man, by Sister Helen, the Black Man's Sacred Book. Wonderful. You can get this uh, copy, uh, your own copy, H-R-S-P-A-T-R-O-L-42 at gmail.com. We also have one second. Here we go. K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me children's book and coloring book, and now Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Kenneth's bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 disinfected cleaning services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in a Movement of Christ, available on Adul Sharif, Dot com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra 
as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. Perfect. And we'll right back to our brother. He's doing a phenomenal job. And we Praise be to Allah. Asiatic Minds online to so share STEM virtually to young kings and queens all across the country. Please sign your children up to Asiatic Minds. It is a virtual school where, you, where your children will be learning supreme wisdom and phenomenal knowledge. Okay, great. Yes, sir. My next question for you, sir, is fear. Have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how have you overcome that fear? No, I, I can't say I was really uh, faced with fear that really stands out. I know the incidents that we had on the various sites of uh, working with NOI security, you know, it was always threatening uh, because, you know, a lot of the brothers sometimes uh, would be armed and we know they were armed. And again, we come in with that moral force, we just think in Allah. We think in Allah, we think in, you know, uh, coming with the spirit of the Honorable Minister Lois Farrakhan. We're not really thinking about you no know, weapons and what you got, what you're gonna pull out because uh, as you know, by, uh, you know, the past, you know, we have uh, taken weapons from, you know, brothers at times that wanted to pull out weapons on us. Um, you familiar with the body slammer? He's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Named the body slammer because he body slammed a guy with a shotgun and other incidents. You know, we know brothers was armed, and you know, you have a little fear. But when you study in the Honorable Minister Lois Farrakhan and want to pattern your life and example, you know, from him and his life, he tell us to challenge our fear. So I learn well, I study well. So when I'm faced with fear. I immediately think, you know, like the Christians say, what would Jesus do? I say, what would Farrakhan do? <laughs> Farrakhan would he would challenge that fear. And that's what I do. So I really had no trembling fear like that. Though. But I think, you know, we all may get the butterflies in certain situations, but I'm going to challenge it. Beautiful. All praises do so alive. Wonderful. <clears throat> My next question, sir, is your tr the trials in your life. What has been the greatest trial? And how you overcome that trap? Oh, that's a good question. And I hope that the believers really take heart to what I want to say, because it might be a little offensive to some. But if it is offensive, it's only because uh, the truth hurts the guilty. So if you're guilty, then, you know, it's probably because... Um, you fit in that category. And and what I want to say is the envy and jealousy that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talks about, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, in the secular world, it's in the nation as well. And if we are truly patterning ourselves after the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, then we want to rid ourselves of those, uh, those evils, evil sins that uh, can cause us to be against one another, but yet front like everything's good, brotherly, sisterly love, you know, with the suit and bow tie and with the, you know, the sisters with their garments on, but yet, you know, deep down inside, we are uh, infected with envy and jealousy. And I say that because uh, we have, um, I had the opportunity to as I gave my history, I moved from Baltimore, wind up literally moving instead of commuting from Baltimore to DC. So while I'm working in NOI security, I eventually said, okay, let me just move here and stay here and transfer here and became a member of Mars number four instead of Mars number six. Uh, I was blessed to be deputy chief of operations, and then I was blessed to be able to get a carry out restaurant that I called Salam Eatery. And, uh, you know, I had that and I was subleasing uh, some uh, space out upstairs. Uh, Captain Larry had a, a Respect for Life bookstore where he was selling books and tapes. And uh, another sister, you know, she was making bow ties and uh, different uh pieces of jewelry 
However, we wasn't getting much support at all. And I'm talking about from the believing community. And I'm saying that now because it's happening now. You know, I have a brother who's one of my best friends, and I'm going to put it out there, Brother Lloyd X uh, from Mars Number 4 in D.C., and he had, uh, he had two carry-out restaurants, one in Montgomery County, which is right on the outskirts of uh, D.C., one in Montgomery County, one in Prince George's County. And um, going back to myself, I didn't get the support. And I'm running this restaurant for like two years. I'm getting more support from the lost found, people that are out on the street, than what I do from the brothers and sisters. And um, one of the dear brothers from D.C., that's a registered FOI, beautiful brother. He pulled me to a side and told me, he said, brother, you know why you're not getting the support that you should get? He said, because um, the brothers feel like, you know, you and others are coming from Baltimore to DC to kind of like take over the boss. Because as you know, brother Joshua, Moss number four was pretty much second to headquarters. Mm, mm. Moss number four was with your father, as a captain at Moss Number Four, Brother William at the time, Dr. Aline being a minister, you know, there was so much power and force and charisma that was going on. And it was just so attracting, I mean, to the masses of the people coming from everywhere, you know. But then uh, when they both were promoted and went to Chicago uh, as Supreme Captain and Minister of Health, for the nation, then uh, brothers was thinking, okay, you know, I come to Baltimore, Captain Larry, he comes, he didn't want to come, but he was sent there. Brother, mm. Ar Brother Arf was the promoted to regional minister, Mid-Atlantic regional minister. So he's the Mid-Atlantic regional minister. He's doing his thing. Uh, he's the actual minister too, the local minister as well as the regional minister for March number four. So they thinking, you know, Baltimore is taking over. You know, Minister R, Captain Larry, Brother Leonard at that time, myself, Brother Nassau, um, known as now. So, you know, the brother told me, he said, they're not coming to support you because they feel like, you know, brothers are taking over. You know, Baltimore is taking over the mosque. And, mm. you know, they didn't like it. And, again, I'm saying that because it's happened in other places as well. And for the listening audience, I want you to know that when you see this, you have to point it out and have to confront whomever, you know, brother, sister, registered, processing, uh, even, you know, those in the community, you know, not in the nation, supporters, sympathizers, you, you know, sense that uh, envy and jealousy, you know, we have to face it. We just like to fear and we have to deal with it. So, uh, that that was one of the serious trials that I have, you know, and like I said, I got a brother right now and he know from my restaurant experience, he asked me to help him with his restaurants. And I did. I went to go help him, got off to a good start. And, you know, the brothers and sisters in the community, I'm talking about the the, the community, not Nation of Islam members, but the communities coming to support the brothers. But none are coming from the nation from the mosque, the brothers and sisters, go out to call out, you know, and sell your papers, come to the brother's store, get a fish sandwich, get something to drink, get a bean pie. Even if you just drop in and check and make sure he's all right, but I ate already or my wife got dinner home, but I want to come and get something from you. And uh, we, we have to stop that because it's running rampant, you know, it's running rampant and we need to put an end to it. And it's not going to, we are into it until we, as individuals, you know, support our brothers because we going literally to the Chinese restaurants. We going to support the Koreans who are making soul food now, you know. So they making collard greens, they making fried fish, they making wings. You know, you want a chicken box? You know, they got you. You know, so our people are running to them, and I'm talking about even brothers and sisters in the nation. You know, instead of sacrificing, saying, I'm going to support my brother. We can't just talk this good talk, you know, talk this good game. We got to live it. We got to be about it, not talk about it. We got to be about it. So, you know, that's the trials that I had uh, and having to eventually wind up closing uh, the restaurant, my carryout restaurant. And Brother Larry and I, fortunately, 
you know, uh, we put in for a contract for uh, security and won the contract, got the contract, closed the store and got busy with the contract. And, you know, the rest is history. But uh, I'll never forget the trial I underwent with uh, the restaurant and not getting support from my brothers and sisters. But I'm still right there, you know, giving them the love and, you know, because like I said, you know, I'm trying to exemplify, emulate the spirit, the mannerisms, the love of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, not just talking it, but walking it, living it. And we all should be doing that, you know, or really we shouldn't really be a part of it because otherwise you're being hypocritical, you know, and a lot of us don't like that, but you know, that's you and your feelings. You're not about feelings, you know, the truth only hurts the guilty. So I just hope from uh, me saying that, that we can learn a lesson and uh, make sure we rid ourselves of, uh, as Captain Wiley say, those, those twins, those evil yes, twins, <laughs> envy and jealousy. Beautiful. Yes, yes sir. sir. And thank you for your powerful point. And uh, I bear witness uh, to witnessing uh, my father in business and mm -hmm. uh, seeing, you know, exactly what you're saying. And many believers, and we have something we got to work on. We're supporting our own and uh, just pulling up and, you know, make sure we support our own. Yes. Let, let me, Definitely Brother happen. Joshua, let, let me flip the script for one minute. I, I hear you mentioning um, your your brother being Brother Rashad. Is that Rashad that was doing close security with Minister Farrakhan or another Rashad? Okay. Yes, sir. So I understand what you're saying. So that's another Rashad. My brother okay. is the one who does the TV and film editing. But the, okay. other, the other Rashad that you hear on the uh, the uh, sponsorships that is Brother Rashad from Chicago. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir, the, is, the cleaning. Yes, yes, okay. Sir. All right, thank you. Yes, sir, no problem. Okay, my next question is what advice would you give to future husbands? Okay, uh, first let me say um, the reason why I asked that question is because uh, Brother Rashad, the one that was uh, with the minister, and you interviewed him as well on the yes, minister's sir. security team, he came in my uh, restaurant one day and uh, I was tired from work and you know he supported us uh the minister was at Howard University and he came you know to the restaurant to get something to eat doing what I said we should do supporting his brother and um he asked me how how, how was I doing because he knew me from rolling with the Captain Larry mm. and, and with the brothers and securing the minister so he comes in and, and asked me how I'm doing I said brother I'm tired you know Brother said to me, he said, brother, you can, no, I said, I'm tired, I'm working hard. He said, brother, you can never work too hard when you're working for yourself. Mm. And I never forgot that. And I share with other entrepreneurs now who say the same thing I said, I'm tired, I'm working hard, you know? You can never work too hard when you're working for yourself. That's why I wanted to know if that was your brother or not. But uh, segueing into your question uh, about fatherhood, uh, I'm a father of one biological son, and then he has blessed me with uh, a daughter, uh, and she has blessed me with a grandson, a great grandson. Mm -hmm. So I have a son, a uh, granddaughter, and then I have a great grandson. And my wife, uh, you know, she had a son and a daughter from a previous uh, marriage. And um, we all one big loving family. And what I would like to say about that is that we have to take to heart our family. I was listening to the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan earlier today, uh, and the title of the lecture was called The Hidden Truths. Mm -hmm. And in that lecture, at the end, he finished the lecture, but he was uh, uh, talking to the guests that were out for the first time. And it was telling him he wanted to, you know, um, see them help in the nation and uh, join, a, you know, join the nation and help out. And he um, said that he want them to keep a law first. He said, mm -hmm. and then and then your family. He said you have to be there for your family. So that's what I want to say as a father. You know, I know. Again, I'm trying to pattern my life after our supreme example, Minister Farrakhan, and 
I'm doing the best that I can daily. You know, I have uh, sessions with my family, you know, where even a chalkboard, I put on the chalkboard uh, daily affirmations that may come, you know, from wherever. It may come from the Bible. It may come from the Quran. It may come from a wise uh, saying. Uh, but the thing is, you know, we pray together. And like they say, a family that prays together stays together. You know, we pray that God continues to bless us to be a strong, loving family, to be able to do what it takes to be successful individually, you know, to encourage, you know, my daughter, you know, and my daughter, she just uh, graduated, man, uh, you know, from uh, a, a major university. And uh, she has a, I'm just going to put it out this gently, she have a, a secret service like job that I can't talk too much about. Mm -hmm. But I'm just talking mm -hmm. about the progress and the success of her and, you know, uh, my son, you know, striving to do the best. I'm constantly in his ear. I can't wait to, you know, my granddaughter, I'm in her ear all the time, you know, trying to teach her, uh, you know, from pregnancy, how to give birth to a God, you know, and then, you know, teaching her, you know, the facts of life as far as, you know, men are concerned, dating and courting and marriage. And then, you know, the great grandson, he's just 13, 14 months, but I just can't wait to get him get in his ear and to teach and train him. But as a whole, we have to, you know, put Allah first and then family. But when we say Allah, you know, we should always keep in mind our best example of exemplifying the spirit of Allah is through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and living our lives in pattern as fathers after him and they say that a woman is a reflection of her man you know then quite naturally you know even if a uh, brother is a foi registered and his wife is not you know by the wife being a reflection of her husband she's going to be a mgt although unofficial and then one day she may officially be a mgt but I beautiful. thank God for my beautiful wife, uh, uh, Phyllis Dunlap Nasor, beautiful wife, beautiful children we have, and we are working hard, you know, only because we keep God as the center. We keep God the center of our family, of our communication, our relations, and I just pray that everyone else would do the same so that you can have a successful, successful fatherhood, motherhood, and then family uh, overall. Praise be to a lot. Excellent, yes, teacher, sir. Excellent. And yes, thank sir. you all for watching. I want to go to the letters that the minister wrote you. Um, yes, sir. What was what was he saying? Uh, he was just thanking me because, uh, as I said, I'm going to pattern myself after him. So I'm in the prison system, and I'm I have the study guides. So I want to do the best I can in the prison. And I'm giving the study guides to the brothers as lessons. So I get them to read the study guide, whatever particular lesson it is, study guide lesson. At that time, it was just from one to, I think, 17 before the rest came out. But uh, and then I eventually came home. But I would give them the lessons to read and study and then answer the questions, write the questions down at the end of the study lesson, the study guide and then answer them, then turn them back into me. That gives me the opportunity, although they didn't know it, again, me being a certified tutor, I wanted to know who had problems with reading, with literacy, mm. with spelling, you know, because you could see these things and, and they came out and it's like, brother, I see you have a short, uh, a, a short circuit as far as, you know, uh, your writing skills are concerned meet me in the library tomorrow, you know, and we could freely go to the library and tutor this brother, you know, and next thing you know, like I said, brother, reading and writing and a lot of the brothers that I was with in the prison, they came home and joined the ranks of the FOI as registered FOI. So I would send in monthly reports to the Honorable Minister Lord Farcon, letting him know what we were doing, just as the secretaries do at the local mosques, 
I'm yes, like, sir. Yes, I'm sir. Gonna send, yeah, I'm going to, you know, do the same thing. So I'm sending him reports of the progress that we make. You know, how many brothers came out for our service? How many came out for study class? Uh, you know, what special events that we have? When Savior's Day come, we would get special events, special meals. Uh, we would have outside guests to be able to come in from Mars number six or Mars number uh, four to come in and represent, you know, us for the Savior's Day events that we had. And um, uh, speaking of that, I just want to give a shout out while I can to our beloved brother, Imam Salam Abdul Salam Muhammad, you know, and uh, he's just such a beautiful brother, exemplifying the Honorable Minister Lord's Farrakhan. Uh, he's just on his post, man. And if you think about it, I don't believe there's another brother that is both the minister and imam of a mosque in the nation of Islam. Mm, that brother mm. is our local minister and Minister Farrakhan appointed him as the second imam. You know, so the brother, man, he is definitely on his post and he's a spark of the Farrakhan flame. You know, <laughs> and he gives us, man, you know, the minister just called him three or four weeks ago to come to Chicago. He comes back, man, and he shared with us, you know, what the minister shared with him, you know, and I'm taking notes, taking notes, just like he took notes. And I probably got just as many notes as he does. But uh, yes, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he, uh, you know, responded to my letters, to my reports, and I sent them uh, to him every month for at least two years. And I got about three letters from him. And um, uh, I've been in his company many times, but he was always busy, whereas though you just don't walk up to the, the minister like that, you know, interrupted him. But I said, well, I get the opportunity. And he walked up on me one time at the Million Man March uh, headquarters, which was a, 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 a sorority or fraternity building that they let us use for the local organizing committee. But that was the Million Man March headquarters uh, in D.C., leading up to the Million Man March. And I'm talking to Sister Sheila, Dr. Eileen's uh, wife, may Allah be pleased with her, she passed away. And he gave her the name, I think, Mashallah or something like that. But her and I, we go way back. So I, I know her way back. And we in the LOC, Local Organizing Committee, talking. And the minister just walked up behind me by himself. And he said, "Assalamu alaikum. And I turned around like, wa alaikum salam. But then he saw, he said, Sister Sheila, Sister Sheila. And, you know, he was just so happy to see her because Sister Sheila, you know, very close with him and uh, was on a cooking team and security and everything she could do. So um, I didn't get a chance to uh, thank him then, but inshallah, I will. But right now, that's not the number one point of meeting him because he's in my heart. I already met him. I already met him. He's in my heart, my mind every day, every day. So that's how uh, I received the letters from the work, doing the work. And he loved the work. And he even mentioned in the letter, and I sent you a copy of it, um, that he said that uh, my words, he's greatly encouraged by my words, you know, because just as he inspired us, you know, those who um, teach and preach you know, to exhaustion like he does. He needs inspiration sometimes as well. So I try to give him an encouraging word, an inspirational word, just by letting him know how he touched my life and how I could have been dead or serving a life sentence instead of being home, protecting him, literally, you know, right in his circle. We've been in, in, in the shuttle buses together, you know, on the tarmac, at the airports, in hotels, in elevators, in vehicles, um, you know, in sitting at, in rooms, in meetings, you know, to one time I thought he was going to do the, the Jesus demo on us because he thought so many brothers and sisters was focusing on vending leading up to the Million Man March trying to make money, mm -hmm. you know. And man, it looked like he was ready to turn the tables over like Jesus did for the money yes, sir. changes. Yes, sir. He, yes, sir. He banged on the table real hard and say, damn it, all y'all concerned about is money. You know, I'm concerned about resurrecting our people and saving our people. That's my focus, you know? 
and he was mad. I mean, he was fired. I mean, Farrakhan, Firecon. <laughs> he was yes, on fire yes, that day. And, and he was like, no nonsense. And you know, when he gets so mad, he'd get up and walk away. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. And that's how he was that particular day. So again, I've been in his presence many times and he felt my spirit like I feel his spirit. And, and he knows that he touched me because I'm right there ready to secure him no matter where he is. Yes, sir. That's, that's, what it, that that's where the letters come from, though, uh, doing the work. All praise praise to Allah. Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, and on sir. behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank Allah for you and the sacrifices that you have made and the sacrifices of your family as well thank to you. help establish Islam here in North America and primarily mm -hmm. in D.C., Baltimore, and the Mid-Atlantic region, but in the prison system as well. We thank Allah for you putting in hard work, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And I thank you, Brother Josh, again, for your wonderful podcast. And as I mentioned about the uh, believers not really supporting other believers that they know have businesses, you know, like what you advertise sponsorship. Likewise, you know, with the podcast, this is such a monumental thing that you have going on here, Joshua, where so we're getting so much information and so much knowledge and so much inspiration. And as I said, man, I have a notebook. I have a notebook here filled with notes, notes from all of the brothers and sisters that you interview and all that information that they have. And I, I, I think on it. I teach on it, you know, with my family and with uh, my mentoring program, Brother Larry and I, you know, we you know, formulated a, a mentoring program, Captain Larry and I, and uh, it's, it's called LIFE. Learning, Improving for Empowerment. That's the mm. acronym. But um, I'm still working with the youth, teaching the youth, you know, teaching my family, you know, teaching co-workers, anybody that I can touch, I want to touch. But a lot of this information is coming from your podcast. So eventually we got to turn this podcast into a book with all the people that you interviewed. But again, I want to say, just like I beg for your support, uh, for me, when I was running the Carry Out Restaurant, uh, and Brother Lloyd X, who's running uh, Fry Guy now in uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, we got to support Brother Joshua family. We have to support him, you know, cash app him something. May not be much, or you may be blessed where you can do a lot. But cash app him something so we can keep this going on and not only keep it going on, but keep it growing on. So by all means, help our brother out and let's not be niggardly, as the Honorable Minister Lois Farrakhan say, you know, we in niggerville, you know, yes, we, don't yes. want to, we don't want to be in niggerville family. We want to exemplify the Honorable Minister Lois Farrakhan and support our brother. Thank you so much, Brother Joshua. Thank, thank you, you sir. so much. All presence and, well. Thank you very and, much for your kind words. And yes, thank sir. you everyone who's watching all across the country. We have two more questions for you, sir. Um, yes, sir. People are showing love all across the country saying, Brother Adio, you were a great example. Great example. Thank you, sir. We definitely uh, held, held things down in uh, Captain Larry. And then he was saying Kennedy Street. I'm assuming is the name of the Million Man March uh, headquarters. Right. Yes, okay. sir. Absolutely. Northwest. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you all very much. Uh, what type of music do you listen to, sir? Right now, ever since I've been watching the podcast, the People's Podcast, I haven't been watching TV other than the news, and uh, I don't listen to much music. Even mm -hmm. when I'm in my car, Joshua, when I'm at work, I'm able to put my Bluetooth on. And I'm listening to one of the brothers or sisters on a podcast. But prior to that, I listened to a little anything. Because when I, I was in college, I had to take a music course. And one thing I've learned was to learn to appreciate all music. So no matter what genre it is, I'll listen to jazz, country. I'll listen to R&B, rap. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, as long as it makes sense. You know, but even when it don't, I'm listening with a critical eye so I can talk about it. <laughs> and I uh, think that, um, you know, we all need some form of relaxation. But right now, you know, I'm focusing on doing podcasts and my studies. And that's how I get my spiritual high and, you know, just stay in the clouds on that. But I know how to come down to earth, and, you know, listen to some good music, you know, when it's time. But I uh, 
I love all music, just to answer your question, especially especially jazz, contemporary oh, jazz. Yes. Excellent. And Berladio, what uh, do you want your legacy to be, sir? I want my legacy to be that uh, I was a great helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. And saying that, it makes me think about something, Joshua, that is very, very critical for the believing community. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was very committed and faithful and dedicated in the absence of Master Farad Muhammad. The Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan has been and is greatly committed and dedicated to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad since he departed from us. We have to be the same way for when that time comes, as the minister says, he letting us know his time is coming. But what are we going to do? You know? What are we going to do when the Honorable Minister Lord's Farrakhan is not physically among us anymore? I believe in the prophecy that it was said that the nation would fall, but it will rise never to fall again. The nation will never fall again. It won't. But how much would we be on top of things the way we are that the minister is physically among us? You know, when I mentioned those dope buster days and things of that nature. And my time that I mentioned on this podcast, we call it the glory days. Mm, Why? Mm. Because, because we were like, you know, running, you know, we wake up running and, you know, we were going nonstop. And now it seemed like some of that glory has faded, but that's only because of the believers. You know, mm. we have to recommit ourselves as the minister said on the anniversary of his birth. He said, we got to be born again. So we need to be born again. We need to actually take the heart what the minister has done and is still doing. Take the heart, as I mentioned, we got to keep this in mind. The messenger was faithful in Master Farah Muhammad's absence. The minister is faithful in the messenger's absence. We have got to be faithful and dedicated and work even harder when the minister is no longer among us but we don't have to wait to that time we can start right now or continue right now but let's step it up let's step it up and do what we have to do so my legacy i would like to be that he was a great helper of the honorable minister lois farrakhan i don't have to be right next to him you know he he's given us the teachings he's given us so much you know it's in my heart my mind so I'm going to spread the good news, the gospel, wherever I go at work. I go to I will go to church and, and, and get some supporters to come to our service. You know, first time members. Next thing you know, they join in the Nation of Islam. You know, so I'll get them from the church. I'll get them from the streets. I'll get them from the shelter, you know, because we got to keep this work going on. The messenger said that, you know, he was going to get all about people, man. That's right. All about people. And through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So if the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not physically in your city to do it, then he's getting it done through you. If you're doing the work, if you're doing the work, you're representing him, he's getting it done through you. So we thank God, Almighty God Allah, for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right. And that's the, the only legacy I want is to say he was a good helper. That's it. Beautiful. Yes, sir. What an amazing legacy sure. that is, sir. On, yes, behalf sir. Of my, uh, on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience, we want to thank you for coming on the People's Podcast. Thank you thank all for you. watching. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, brother Joshua. Thank, thank you. you all for watching. Praise be to Allah.